All right, I'm going to show you something very interesting. One thing you'll often see with Roman Catholics, when you show them verses that prove salvation is not by your works, they always have to run to James 2.24 to back up what they're saying. And this is because Catholics are non-dispensational. There's an email right there. Catholics are non-dispensational. They don't believe in the rightly dividing the word of truth. They think the entire Bible is to them, even back in the Old Testament and into the future with the time of Jacob's trouble. Which is why they'll run to James 2.24, which is not even written to Christians. Here's the Catholic website right here. It, uh, it's catholic.com, very mainstream Catholic website. It says, James 2.24 is remar remarkably clear. You see then that, the, uh, that, sorry, you're quoting from their Vatican versions. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Yet millions of Christians teach the opposite. They teach, or they claim that we, we are justified by faith alone, saying good works are unnecessary for Christians in the process of justification. Um, that's what the Bible says. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Very, very simple. But they always had to run James 2.24. Well, there's a problem with that. Go to my Bible app. Who is the book of James written to? James chapter 1, verse number 1. Whenever a Catholic brings up James 2.24, make sure you show him James 1, verse 1, and show him that James is not even written to Christians. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes, which are just, which are scattered abroad, greeting. James is to the twelve tribes. It's not written to Christians. Now, who is who is the Pauline epistles written to? Let me show you that. Romans chapter eleven. Sorry, my throat's my throat's kind of dry. So that's why I'm swallow, That's why I'm swallowing quite a lot. Romans chapter eleven, verse thirteen. So yeah, don't mind me swallowing. My my throat's kind of my throat is dry, so I do apologize. Romans chapter 11, verse 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Paul is the apostle to the Gentiles. Some more scripture on that is Romans chapter 15, verse number 16. It says, that I should be the minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, being sanctified by the Holy Ghost. Pa Paul is our apostle, not James. James is to the twelve tribes. Paul is to the Gentiles. Now, what does Paul say on salvation? Because the Roman Catholics, they won't, they won't, they'll avoid these verses like the plague. Romans chapter 11, verse number 6. Because Paul does not teach works-based salvation, he teaches against it. And if by grace, then it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. You see, in this current dispensation, the church age, if, if salvation is by works, then it's no more by grace. You know, if you're a Roman Catholic, how do you answer that? You don't. You can't. Uh, Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. A really good one. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, like that, not of works, lest any man should boast. You're not saved by works, by grace through faith. Now back to Romans chapter 4, verse 5. The Catholics, they, they, they can't handle the scriptures. That's why they have to always run to divine tradition and, and always, well, what do the church fathers say? A, a common straw man argument for Roman Catholics is they'll say, well, Christians have always believed this. Okay, two problems with that. Number one, who are they calling Christians? They're referring to the Catholic Church. Second of all, um, what does the Bible say? If the Bible says something contrary to what Christians have always believed, what do you go by? Do you go by the Bible or, or man's tradition? You go by the Bible. So, you know, I, I've always said that if the Bible says something contrary to what, quote-unquote, Christians have always believed, then I'm going to go by what the Bible says. And because Scripture trumps all of it. Scripture trumps what man has always believed. Um, Romans 4, verses 4 to 5. Uh, actually, I'll go down to verse 8. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord will not impute sin. Not by works. God imputes righteousness without works. It's very, very simple. We're not saved by our works. The Roman Catholics can't handle these verses. Uh, where is it? Romans chapter... Not Romans. Uh, 
think it's sec. Actually, I think it's Second Timothy. Let me check. I don't. I don't have them all off the top of my head, but I think it's Second Timothy one verse eight and nine. Here it is. Be thou, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in, in Christ Jesus before the world began. Again, it's not according to our works. God gives us salvation. We don't work our way to heaven. Titus 3.5 not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. God saves us, it's not by our own works of righteousness. And, and there's so many verses I can go to. These are just some good ones. I think it's Philippians chapter 3, verse 9. Uh, here it is, Philippians 3, 9. And having found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is of the faith of Christ, even the righteousness which is of, right, sorry, righteousness which is of God by faith. Again, our righteousness is, is not, not, we don't have our own righteousness, we have the righteousness of faith. They're very simple. Um, those are some verses I could think of off the top of my head. There are other verses too that disprove works-based salvation. But you get the picture. The Roman Catholics can't handle these scriptures, so they have to run to verses that aren't even dispensationally for us. It, it's it's typical. And same thing with a lot of the street preachers. They'll run to verses, like the street preachers, they'll run to Matthew, they'll run to Matthew 24, verse 13, which says, that's what it says, uh, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And again, you know, not, not even dispensationally for us. Matthew 24 is dispensationally in the time of Jacob's trouble. It's not even for us now. So, and it's funny because even if Matthew was, you know, dispensationally for us, who was Jesus speaking to here? He was speaking to Jews. He wasn't even speaking to Christians. Christians did, Christians did, not, did not exist during this time period. Uh, Matthew twenty four sixteen. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Talking about Judea, what are Christians doing in Judea or not? And then it says in verse 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. What are Christians doing absorbing the Sabbath? We don't. It's talking to the Jews. So it's just a classic example of, of the uh, heresy of Roman Catholics, this, this uh, non-dispensationalism. This is what, I mean, if you're non-dispensationalist, you make a complete mess of the Bible. It, it's, it's, just, it's that simple. You have to directly divide the word of truth. So don't be deceived by Roman Catholicism. It's a satanic cult. Same thing with, with a lot of these true preachers. They're a satanic cult. So anyway, God bless you. Goodbye.